Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel, NI10. Right from the time NI10 was announced, there is a constant question in the DevOps community. Can NI10 replace DevOps engineers? Or can the workflow automation supported by NI10 replace existing DevOps engineers in the company? Even lot of our subscribers ask the same question in the comment section. So I thought I'll make a video on NI10. I'll explain you what exactly is workflow automation followed by DevOps engineers. And also I will answer the most asked question. This video is definitely going to be insightful. Make sure you watch it till the end. Without wasting any time, let's get started. First of all, what is NI10? In simple terms, NI10 is a workflow automation platform which is powered by AI. Now you might ask a question, what is workflow automation? Let me explain you with an example. Imagine you are working as a DevOps engineer in a company and there is a GitHub repository where your source code is hosted. Now this is a very critical repository for your organization. So whenever someone creates an issue on this GitHub repository, you want to trigger a notification onto the Slack channel. And you have all the right developers on this Slack channel. So whenever a GitHub issue is created, notification is sent to the Slack channel and developers immediately respond to the GitHub issue. Now this is a very basic workflow automation. Now what is required to implement this workflow automation? Step one, you have to set up webhook on your GitHub repository. So there is a trigger that is set up on push action or in this case on issue creation action. Step two, you need a virtual machine. Step three, you have to write a Python application. Step four, you have to host this Python application. So maybe you need to create a server web server or application server. Step five, you have to expose this server, maybe through a load balancer, or maybe you need to expose this through a reverse proxy. Step six, you have to create a trigger. That is, you have to connect your GitHub issue with the Slack. So typically you have to tell the GitHub webhook that, okay, this is my Python server URL. And obviously in step seven, you have to implement logic for Slack notification. So these are the steps that you would typically take. And this is one of your basic workflow automation. Similarly, as a DevOps engineer, you might set up different workflows. For example, this is one of the workflow that I was working on. And what this workflow does. So whenever someone triggers this workflow manually. First, it would prepare a node or it would set up an environment. Within that, it would install Docker, then Kubernetes, then Jenkins, set up monitoring, configure the DevOps user, implement security configuration, and finally the setup is done. Now this is a bit complicated setup or this is a bit complicated workflow when compared to the simple workflow that I've explained. In any of these cases, NI10 can actually help you automate it, right? So NI10 is a workflow automation that can actually help you automate this process with little less effort. It's not that NI10 can do a magic and you don't have to do anything. It's not that you write a prompt and NI10 sets up this entire thing for you, but it can help you reduce your effort in this case. So all that you have to do, you have to log in, you have to set up an account with NI10 and you have to use the existing workflows or you have to use the existing pieces in NI10 and combine that pieces to implement your workflow. Don't worry, I will show you a very, very basic workflow so that you can get started with NI10. Now the question is, but Abhishek, isn't this very secure for my organization? Like 
imagine if i give enet an access to my slack or if i give enet an information about my github repository isn't it impacting the security of my company definitely yes so that's why enet an can also be self hosted it's very simple you can run enet an as part of a docker container or within your docker environment and all that steps are available in the enet an official documentation if required i will also show you that in the future videos how to self host your own enet an now going back abhishek can you take a simple example and show us how enet an can implement the workflow automation and then i'll answer your question can it replace devops engineers or not now what we'll do so we will head to our github repository i'll take one of my github repositories let's say i'll take terraform 0 to hero it doesn't matter you can take any of your github repositories if you don't have one you can also create one let's go to the settings and within the settings let's head to webhook so what are we trying to do so we are basically trying to implement part of this workflow where i'll show you how when a github webhook is triggered or when a github webhook is implemented or you know the right thing is triggered in the github it can be the push event it can be branch creation it can be issue anything so whenever an event is triggered in github how you can run a python program or how you can run a javascript program that can talk to slack or maybe that can talk to jira that can send an email notification for you this doesn't matter but how this part of the workflow can be implemented in enlighten with very very less effort so what you need to do first of all in your github make sure you have access to the webhooks so if you are the owner of the repository you will have access to webhook click on add webhook in my case i have already created a webhook so i will proceed with the existing webhook then go back to your enlighten so just create an account with enlighten i will put the link in the description create workflow add your first step of the workflow in our case what is the first step on webhook call you can also do, go with a manual trigger but i will proceed with the webhook call and here i just have to provide the right http method so when it comes to github github is sending the request to your python program so it will be a post request github is posting some information to you what is the issue url who created the issue right all that information github is sending to you so it has to be a post url and then you just have to proceed with saving this configuration right so you have created a post uh, webhook or trigger sorry a path you can keep it as is if you want you can also go with advanced security but at this point of time it is not required so i will just save this configuration now in the next step you know i can go with running a program as i told you whatever program that you write it will be hosted on the node i will go with http request or let's just go back instead of http request i'll just delete it i'll go with code and select this here you have option for javascript and python at this point javascript is ga generally available whereas python is still beta anyways at this point we are not worried about the code but we are only worried about understanding how enet and can trigger your program how it can host your program and how it can be triggered automatically so i'll just save this configuration even though this is javascript it's just like hello world in javascript perfect so i save the configuration now click on the save button and all that you need to do is go back and activate your workflow automation that you have configured now within the workflow my bad the other one so within this workflow if you click 
right click on it and click on open you have a url where your workflow can be triggered so if your github sends request to this url or sends an api request here then your workflow can be triggered automatically and this workflow invokes your python program so typically github can talk to your python program by interacting with this url there is a test url and production url you should always go with the production url in real time so just save this url get back to your github right and in your github as i told you you can also add a new webhook i'll just pause here so that i can enter my uh, authentication with github mobile okay let's take that url paste it here i'll keep all the options default because i'm not worried about content type security at this point so i will just add the webhook and now you can see github is trying to send the request okay so it says it's a failure let's see what happened why github was not able to send the request to n10 let's go to the recent deliveries okay the response is 404 and it says requested webhook is not registered let's see okay so my bad i activated the wrong one i should actually have activated activated this one the most recent changes can be lost let's refresh okay try to activate it perfect now let's re-trigger the request re-deliver it yes okay so the re-delivery is in progress this is the one 200 and what does it say in the response it say workflow was started why does it say workflow was started because you know when you look at the workflow that we have configured so this workflow got initiated it triggered the code and if we right click and open the code all that we have in this code is nothing so it just says workflow is started because we haven't actually invoked slack api or we haven't invoked jira api so what will be your next step typically if you want to continue with this workflow so within the code you should have invoked a slack channel or maybe you should have uh, sent a notification to the slack channel within the javascript code or within the python code however i haven't proceeded to that step all that i wanted to show you how you can automate a simple workflow using n i10 if required I mean, if you are interested, I can definitely explain complicated workflows like this. But before that, let me answer the question. Can N10 replace DevOps engineers? The answer to it is definitely no. Because it is only for workflow automation. It can definitely help with the task that I was talking about, which is like operation support, typical operations like maybe invoking your program or maybe installing some packages on a virtual machine or regular workflows like monitoring dashboards otherwise as a devops engineer you work with complicated ci cd pipelines you work with complicated kubernetes management you work with infrastructure creation all these things cannot be automated by n i10 n i10 can only make some of these things easy for you to be very honest i really like kestra more than n i10 for devops i'm not talking about sales i'm not talking about it operations i'm not talking about security operations n i10 is definitely great with respect to those things but if you talk about devops i am you know more inclined towards kestra because it comes with real time problem solving like Ansible integration, Terraform integration, managing your Kubernetes clusters, all that can be done through Kestra effortlessly. I also made a couple of videos on Kestra. If you're interested, you can search for Kestra videos or also I'll put the link in the description. Because in this case, there is real value for DevOps engineers, not only for workflow automation, but also for regular tasks that DevOps engineers does. So this is about NI10 and 
this is how n i10 can be used you can also give it a try you can set up a free account if you want a full video maybe self hosting n i10 and configuring uh, complex workflows something like i am using here you can definitely lo let me know in the comment section and i'll be happy to help i hope you found this video informative see you all in the next one take care bye bye everyone